ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ವಯಂ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನವಲ್ಲಭಾಯ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಕಲ್ಯಾಣರಾಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಚರಣ ಕಮಲೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ವನ್ಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿನ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಇಯರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೆಷನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿನ್ ಸಮ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಡಿಡ್ ಅ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಅ ಚಾನ್ಸ್ ಟು share our pushti thoughts and uh, ask some questions or uh, hear what i have to say about the topics that we had uh, previously talked upon yesterday we just celebrated hindu new year samvatsar and with that new energy new atmosphere newness for the entire year uh, may come upon us may it give us new energy and new force that helps us to live our spiritual and all the problems uh, go away and may we live a spiritual life with utmost joy and power and force towards it where all the dis- all the barriers all the speed breakers just go away and we can go with full speed towards our destination previously in the last session in january we talked on who are the pushti beings how pushti marg is inclusive and brings everyone who is wanting to love shri krishna everyone who wants to get connected to shri krishna everyone who wants to love shri krishna is welcomed without any discrimination whether the person is of what caste creed gender color race that does not matter and a person can just come away whatever identity they carry they can become a vaishnava if they love shri krishna also we talked about how these chauriasi vaishnavas they for vaishnavas of shivalabhacharya ji they have different characteristics in their life in their life sketch which shri gokul nath ji and shri hari rai ji have described in the varta ji and how those characteristics help us or guide us in our current life in our lifetime where we face different challenges different problems personally professionally uh, physically culturally we all are facing different uh, problems situations in that and how we can deal with those situations and problems how should be our behavior towards the situation what should be our response to it and many more such things we are about to learn from the varta ji's and from the crux of the varta ji's um in this these uh, new sessions so the first session is about the first version of of pushti shri mahaprabhu ji when he started prithvi parikrama there were many vaishnavas with him until shri mahaprabhu ji got the brahmasman diksha from shri thakur ji himself and then he passed it up over to damodar das ji so there were many devotees of shri mahaprabhu ji but when we talk about the first vaishnav of pushti shri damodar das harsani ji is considered the first it is also con- considered that entire vaishnav shrishti in the form of damodar das ji is connected to shri mahaprabhu ji we all represent all the vaishnavas represent shri damodar das sarsani ji so shri damodar das ji is the main 
character of Sri Mahaprabhu ji is sevak he is the he is the leading vaishnav he is the leading uh, devotee of Sri Mahaprabhu ji for whom Sri Mahaprabhu ji says damla ye marag tere liye prakat kiyo hai i have manifested this path of pushti for you damla it is only for you and so let us begin with what shri damodar das ji is life teaches us the first vishta of pushti marg shri damodar das arsani ji he was given the first brahm samand diksha by shri mahaprabhu ji shri mahaprabhu ji had such uh, confidence over him such uh, love towards him such compassion towards damodar das ji that shri mahaprabhu ji did not think that once i have received the brahm samand diksha from thakur ji shravan shamale pakshe ekadasham mahanishi on the 11th day of shravan mass when i received the brahm samand diksha shri mahaprabhu ji did not wait to give it to shri gosai ji shri gopinath ji to his family first and then to a devotee the first thing he did after receiving the diksha or the bhagavad agya of brahm samand shri mahaprabhu ji immediately give it to damodar das ji i have manifested this mark for you this path for you damla so damla ji became the first brahma sambandhi vaishnav of pushti bhakti mal damodar das ji in leela shri lalita sakhi the four main sakhis of shri krishna one of the main sakhis of shri krishna is lalita sakhi shri damodar das ji is the manifestation of Radhita Sakhi. She is one of the Prabhu's closest Sakhi. Shri Mahaprabhu ji lovingly called Damodar Das ji as the name Damla. He said, Damla te, Damla so amal prakte. Amla prakte. Which means impurity. Mal means impurity. Remains away. Amla, which means no impurities are can touch damla or damodar das ji shri mahaprabhu ji always resides in damla ji's heart shri damodar das ji's heart shri mahaprabhu ji had imbibed his all the teachings and the deep knowledge of pushti mark in damla ji's heart with mere compassion towards him the pushti mark resided in shri damla ji's heart we can say that and also shri mahaprabhu ji asked damla ji to pass it forward to teach shri gosai ji to guide shri gosai ji and shri gopinath ji after his asur vyam ho leela so shri damodar das ji is also he can also be considered as a guru of shri Mah- shri gosai ji and shri uh, gopinath ji in one form he was a devotee at the same time what shri mahaprabhu ji's philosophy is how shri mahaprabhu ji has propounded the path of grace shri damodar das ji guided all of those philosophies and uh, knowledge and information of shri mahaprabhu ji to shri gopinath ji and shri gosai ji before shri damla ji met shri mahaprabhu ji his life was a bit different Shri Damodar Das ji's father was very wealthy but childless he had no children so for receiving the grace of god for having children he served a saint gave him a boon the saint said you will have not one son but three the first two will be quite normal normal means attached with the worldly matters in the material world while the third one will be in nature form and quality like shri hari himself like shri krishna himself damodar das as an infant always had his vision fixed on the end of his nose he always looked down it is also said that until shri damla ji 
had did darshan of shri mahaprabhu ji in champaran when shri mahaprabhu ji's pragatya happened in champaran shri damla ji was present there and until then shri damla ji did not open his eyes for he was always lost in the divine remembrance of his beloved shri mahaprabhu ji he still didn't meet shri mahaprabhu ji at bhutal shri damodar das ji was waiting for shri mahaprabhu ji's pragatya and there is a whole story of how shri damodar das ji's father was going towards a tour a pr- pilgrimage towards kashi and damla ji wasn't going with him how everyone got sick and everyone got a dream that if you call damla damodar das from your house only then everyone can go healthily happily towards their destination everyone should do as damodar das says damodar das ji was called from the home and asked what should we do now even shri lakshman bhat ji illamma gauri ji mother and father of shri vallabha chari ji were with damodar das ji pita kapoor chand chatri and uh, they all went to champaran and waited for shri mahaprabhu ji's pragatya and uh, damla ji was also present there so until then shri damla ji did not open his eyes he was remembering all the leelas all the previous memories of shri mahaprabhu ji in the nitya leela damodar das ji had no interest in his father's wealth after his death he continued to sit on the balcony anxiously waiting the auspicious moment when shri mahaprabhu ji would arrive when shri damodar das ji became young he always wanted to devote himself to shri mahaprabhu ji he eagerly waited in the balcony of his house every day he just used to sit there and look at the path of his village from where shri mahaprabhu ji would arrive after some days shri mahaprabhu ji came to damodar das ji's town damla ji seeing shri mahaprabhu ji became so filled with ecstasy uh, that he just jumped he was so excited he was so happy that he jumped from the balcony and grasped shri mahaprabhu ji's Uh, feet he did danvat pranam immediately after jumping from the balcony at that moment he received a new divine body that was filled with divine love for shri krishna damodar das after having the mere sight of shri mahaprabhu ji mahaprabhu ji became firmly established in the constant bliss of shri krishna nectar the krishna ras then shri damodar das ji was always filled with shri krishna ras he always talked about shri krishna thought about shri krishna in form of shri mahaprabhu ji there are different varta prasangs in the entire story of shri damodar das arsani ji here we will discuss upon some of the varta prasangs uh, one of which uh, the brahma sambandha diksha is uh, one of the major varta prasangs in damodar das ji's story once while shri mahaprabhu ji was resting by the banks of shri yamuna ji in gokul on the thakrani ghat under a chokar tree he became concerned as to how he would be able to fulfill the thakur ji's agya the order to re-establish the relation of people of his impure kali age kali yug with the divine shri krishna how the jeev can again how the humans who are fallen into the worldly matters will be able to establish a relationship with shri krishna in this difficult times of kali yug where everything is about the material world how will a jeev be able to connect with shri krishna in such a time with that thought with that uh, worry in his heart shri mahaprabhu ji was sitting on the banks of shri yamuna ji while engaged in such deep thoughts shri krishna suddenly appeared in 
फ्रंट ऑफ महाप्रभु जी एंड सेड वाई डू यू वरी सो श्री महाप्रभु जी देन रिप्लाइड द नेचर ऑफ दीज सोल्स इज सो सिंपल दैट आई एम कंसर्न एज टू हाउ देर रियूनियन विद यू कैन एवर टेक प्लेस द जी वाज द पीपल आर सो मच involved or so much into the worldly matters they are so sinful they do so many aprads how can they connect with you shri krishna how is it possible i am worried about that shri mahaprabhu ji said shri krishna then consoled shri mahaprabhu ji saying those who take initiation from you brahma sambandh initiation from you will be relieved of all sins and i will personally accept them go out and take divine souls under your shelter when on, on the following morning shri mahaprabhu ji composed a small doctrine for his disciples which is called siddhant rahasya whatever shri thakur ji said to shri mahaprabhu ji at the night shri vallabha chari ji composed a a small granth out of it a doctrine out of it which is named as siddhant rahasya where he says tadak sharash uchchate which means whatever shri thakur ji said at the night to me i am not changing even a word of it and i am putting it as it is in this granth of siddhant ras which explains the orders shri krishna had given to him on the previous night of ekadashi Later on, Shri Mahaprabhu ji asked Damla ji, Damla, did you hear anything? Shri Damla ji was also sleeping near Shri Mahaprabhu ji on the banks of Shri Amna ji at the night. Shri Mahaprabhu ji was sitting and he was thoughtful while Shri Damla ji was sleeping. After the Bhagavad Agya, after Shri Krishna disappeared, Shri Mahaprabhu ji asked Damodar Das ji, Damla, did you hear anything did you hear the conversation between me and thakur ji damla damla ji replied i heard thakur ji's voice but i was not able to understand what he said shri mahaprabhu ji then enlightened him last night shri thakur ji ordered me to give people the divine formula of brahma sambandh and through the through it shri thakur ji will accept them the souls thus absolving all of their sins therefore it is necessary to take brahm samband the reason why damla ji said he did not understand what shri thakur ji had said was that if he had understood then he would be on the same level as shri mahaprabhu ji shri thakur ji did some agya to mahaprabhu ji and damla ji was present there and if damla ji would have said that yes i heard and i understood what shri thakur ji said he would be just as the same of shri mahaprabhu ji but shri damodar das ji understands the vivek which should be there in a das in a sevak and in a guru yes i understand everything but i don't want to understand i just want to understand things with your view with your perspective with your understanding with your own voice shri mahaprabhu ji i only want to understand so with that emotion damla ji said sunyo to sahi par samjho nahi this is a very famous phrase in pushtimal where shri damla ji says sunyo to sahi par samjho nahi i did hear but i did not understand so damla ji wanted to hear the explanation from shri mahaprabhu ji for true knowledge can only be granted or gained through the guru's grace for this reason damla ji had no real interest in hearing shri thakur ji for he was only concerned with becoming the devout disciple a devout disciple of shri mahaprabhu ji he was just wanting to be shri mahaprabhu ji's sevak servant because Shri Mahaprabhu ji is the one who has introduced 
श्री श्रीनाथ जी टू द जीव श्रीनाथ जी गेट कृपा ऑन द जीव थ्रू श्री महाप्रभु जी सो इफ देर वॉज नो गुरु नो महाप्रभु जी हाउ वुड अ जीव कैन कनेक्ट टू श्री कृष्ण श्री महाप्रभु जी आफ्टर गिविंग दमला जी द ब्रह्म संबंध दीक्षा टोल्ड हिम दमला दिस पाथ हैज बीन एस्टेब्लिश्ड फॉर यू ये मार्ग तेरे लिए प्रकट किया है दमला आई हैव एस्टेब्लिश्ड दिस पाथ ऑफ भक्ति ऑफ पुष्टि फॉर यू दमला इन वन मोर प्रसंग वेयर श्री दमला जी एंड श्री महाप्रभु जी हैज अ ग्रेट बॉन्ड वेयर इन द फर्स्ट प्रसंग वी कैन सी दैट श्री महाप्रभु जी इज अवेक श्री दमला जी स्लीपिंग ऑन द बैंक्स ऑफ श्री यमुना जी एंड ठाकुर जी अराइव that is the beginning of bhakti where the jeev is in a deep sleep or is sleeping and guru is awake and god arrives that is the beginning of the bhakti and then comes the falavastha or the utmost level of the topest level of the bhakti which uh, the guru is nishchint he is now free of all thoughts and worries that how would the jeev get connected to shri krishna now he has introduced he has established the relationship of the jeev and jagdish so now guru is out of worry and he is sleeping the jeev has enlightened himself and he is awake and then the then the shri shrinath ji then shri krishna arrives the god arrives so in the beginning jeev is sleeping guru is awake and god arrives and in the end guru is sleeping jeev is awake and god arrives so these both situations beginning and the ultimate uh, crux of the story is that guru established the relationship of jeev with jagdish with shri krishna and then he steps back now you enjoy your relationship with shri thakur ji you build a relationship with shri thakur ji and how you build that relation how you communicate with him how you live your life with him will decide how you will uh, grow your bhakti how you will bring prosperity to it the second vartha prasang is so interesting once in jatipura at the sundar shila while shri mahaprabhu ji was resting in damla ji's lap shrinath ji appeared nearby from the golden parvat golden mountain shrinath ji with making a sound of his payal of his nupur cham 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 he start started coming towards shri mahaprabhu ji with making the sound of his payal damla ji forbade shrinath ji to approach for he feared that being restless in nature shrinath ji is very playful he is the he is a 7 year old child and he is very playful he wants to come near shri mahaprabhu ji he wants to sit in his lap he wants to hug him shrinath ji wants to do his leelas with shri mahaprabhu ji with the jeevas so he is very restless in nature shrinath ji so shrinath ji might awake his beloved guru with that fear damla ji raised his hand and stopped shrinath ji from coming near shri mahaprabhu ji on a very hot shila in the sunlight the shila was so hot and shrinath ji just stood there on the hot shila and obeying shri damla ji's command stood afar and waited for shri mahaprabhu ji's arise shri mahaprabhu ji was sleeping and shrinath ji was waiting for shri mahaprabhu ji to uh, wake when shri mahaprabhu ji awoke and saw shrinath ji standing a short distance away he asked him why he had not come near shri mahaprabhu ji immediately went towards shrinath ji and asked him baba why are you standing here why didn't you come near me shrinath ji replied i indeed uh, i intended to wanted to come near you but your disciple damla he stopped me from doing so upon hearing this shri mahaprabhu ji started to repent damla ji he started to scold damla ji for his 
seemingly unjust action how can you do this with thakur ji he is such a small child he is so innocent he is so playful and how can you do so with shri thakur ji is standing in such a heat but shrinath ji interrupted shri mahaprabhu ji by saying don't be angry on damla ji don't be angry with him he is only keeping his dharma as your servant or as your sevak and for him to have acted like this is certainly justified shri mahaprabhu ji then took shrinath ji in his lap and affectionately pressed his cheeks and hugged him so here we can see firstly shri damla ji tells shri mahaprabhu ji suniyo to sahi par samjho nahi i heard but i don't understand that is the beginning of the bhakti where you hear a lot of things you go through a lot of things but you understand some parts of it and ultimately when the guru is nishchint uh the jeeva or damla ji for example here who represents all the jeeva srishti shri damla ji is awake and he has the power or the ability to even stop the divine from doing some action so in the beginning can hear but can't understand and hear the ability to even stop the divine from doing some action these are very opposites of each other and this is only possible when the guru shri mahaprabhu ji does kripa on the jeev here what we learn from shri damodar das ji is these true prasangs in the first prasang always we should be aware who our guru is and should seek guidance from him yes we must know something in our life we we must have knowledge i always see this and i always implement this in my personal life as well that always be a student there is so much to learn from even younger people from you from small children also you learn something from the older also you learn something there is always something to be learned from everyone but ultimately when we talk about guru shri damodar das ji and shri mahaprabhu ji's relation shri damodar das ji has nothing to uh, worry about the world or nothing to learn from world shri mahaprabhu ji's teachings are the only uh, thing which shri damla ji is concerned about and he just wants to learn from shri mahaprabhu ji what he has to say what his thought is so firstly what we are supposed to learn from the first vartha prasang is that in any situation once you are committed towards a guru seek his guidance seek his uh, understanding towards what situation you are facing or what is your problem what guidance do you want seek your guru's uh, perspective or views upon it in the second vartha prasang devote yourself completely towards the purpose that your devotion becomes greater than the purpose devoting yourself completely towards the bhakti that shri mahaprabhu ji gave that gives such a level of devotion or spirituality such a level of awakening within yourself that you possess the powers that can stop even divine this strength can only be acquired here stopping the divine is not the crux of the story but having that much of strength or that that much of awakening where you can see the divine where you can talk to him where you can even stop him because the divine is playful shri krishna is playful and he plays different games with us but how we we surrender to him with mere simplicity and dualism uh, with no ego when we surrender to him he grants us a right guru and that guru guides us how to reach till shrinath ji so having the confidence and believe a strong belief firm belief in the lotus feet of guru that this guru is the one shri mahaprabhu ji is the one who will take me through uh, all the different situations and problems in my life and will unite me with shri krishna 
so these two varta prasangs teach us a lot further when shri ramla ji and shri gusai ji they both have a conversation there is something very important which we have to learn from shri damodar da ji's varta prasang once when namla ji and shri gusai ji were sitting alone alone shri gusai ji asked a question to namla ji what he thought about shri mahaprabhu ji what did you think about about shri mahaprabhu ji shri gusai ji asked namla ji namla ji replied that shri mahaprabhu ji is even greater than bhagwan namla ji explained the best of of the gift is even greater than the gift take the example of someone who has a lot of money but even greater than this even greater than his money is the source from which he received it if someone has something there must be a source from where he received it in the same fashion shri mahaprabhu ji gives the priceless gift of shrinath ji to the jeevas our thakur ji is given by shri mahaprabhu ji he gives us shri, he grants us the seva he gives us the seva and so shri mahaprabhu ji becomes greater than shri thakur ji because if there is no mahaprabhu ji it is impossible to have shrinath ji for this reason he is greater than the bhagwan for he gives us shri thakur ji his beloved it is not easy to give away what you love it is not easy to share something what you love with everyone shri shrinath ji is the heart of shri mahaprabhu ji shri mahaprabhu ji is govardhan sthiti utsah stal leela prem apurita shri mahaprabhu ji is completely absorbed in the ras of shrinath ji he is so much in love he is so much in love and compassion towards shri shrinath ji that if someone else would have something such priceless it is impossible that they can give it away but shri mahaprabhu ji gives what he loves to his devotees so shri gusai ji calls him adeya dana dakshashya the giver of something which cannot be given one day after damla ji had performed the shraddh of his father the after after rituals after rites of after his father passing away he went to have the site of shri gusai ji to do darshan of shri gusai ji during the afternoon uthapan seva shri gusai ji seeing damla ji immediately asked him for a gift for no for, uh, for on the day of shraddh it is customary to give gifts so shri gusai ji asked him for a gift damla ji replied that he would gift him the purport of one of uh, the meaning or what he had learned from shri mahaprabhu ji he would gift shri gusai ji one of the half lines of shri mahaprabhu ji's doctrine of siddhant rahasya shri, later damla ji explained to shri gusai ji the outline and inner scope of the path of grace ushtamar as well as shri mahaprabhu ji's commentary on shri shrimad bhagavatam and other devotional works of shri mahaprabhu ji so shri damla ji gifted the knowledge to shri gusai ji of shri mahaprabhu ji after that meeting shri gusai ji did not let damla ji bow down to him shri gusai ji had so much respect towards damla ji that he even did not let him bow down to him or let him touch his feet for he reason that shri mahaprabhu ji always resided within his heart within damla ji's heart shri mahaprabhu ji divinely appeared to damla ji and told him to daily bow down to shri gusai ji to do dandavat uh, of shri gusai ji every day the following day when damla ji tried to touch shri gusai ji's feet the later prohibited he later prohibited him shri gusai ji prohibited damla ji to do the chanasparsh but when damla ji had told him that shri mahaprabhu ji had ordered me 
to do so shri gosain ji allowed him and gave him this privilege every day of touching his lotus feet shri gosain ji used to always leave a half of his throne his gadi for shri damla ji to sit shri mahaprabhu ji observing the situation where shri damla ji is sitting on half gadi of shri gosain ji he appeared to shri damla ji and asked him who is who did he think shri gosain ji is or what is his thoughts upon shri gosain ji who is shri gosain ji for him shri mahaprabhu ji asked damla ji replied that he is your son for me shri mahaprabhu ji then revealed to shri damla ji that you must see shri gosain ji as my own form shri gosain ji is my own swarup so when she is sthapita shesh mahatme i am completely present in the form of shri gosain ji from that day damla ji looked upon shri gosain ji as the same as shri mahaprabhu ji he looked as shri gosain ji as shri mahaprabhu ji is present there so these are some learnings which we must have as a vaishnav that you should not have differentiation between shri mahaprabhu ji and the balaks balak sabhe brahma jani hai when we bow down whomsoever it may be it may be me or some other guru some other acharya some other vallabh kul as an individual capacity we cannot grant you bhakti but when you look at us as shri mahaprabhu ji as the vanshad of shri mahaprabhu ji as vallabh swarup only then we can also grant you bhakti and you can also receive bhakti so this varta prasang or this whole conversation of shri mahaprabhu shri gosain ji and shri damodar das ji teaches us that dan bado ke data the giver is bigger than the gift the second thing is that gift something which is ungivable no one can give something like this gift something like that shri damla ji gifted the knowledge which no one can give shri mahaprabhu ji gifted shri krishna which no one can give and so uh, gift something which is unique no one can give and the third thing that we learn from this conversation of gosain ji and damla ji is uh, in dradai na charana na kiro bharosa in the ashray pad surdas ji in the ashray pad drada in the charana na kiro drada in the charana na means shri gosain ji is present in front of shri gosain shri surdas ji and surdas ji is pointing his fingers towards shri gosain ji's lotus feet and drada in the charana na in the present the charna charnarvin that you can see the feet lotus feet that you can see of a guru you must have firm belief and firm surrender to those lotus feet in form of shri mahaprabhu ji so these three things complete commitment towards your guru shri mahaprabhu ji our guru is shri mahaprabhu ji so we must have complete surrender towards him second thing shri mahaprabhu ji and shri gosain ji or the vallabh kul are one swarup so there are all these thoughts and learnings from these conversations of shri gosain ji and shri damla ji in the end we can be we can uh what can be said about shri damodar das ji what can be said or explained about shri damla ji for within his heart lived shri mahaprabhu ji damla ji to this day remains the perfect example of how a vaishnav should be for this reason shri mahaprabhu ji said to damla ji at kokul this path has appeared for you damla ji was indeed true recipient or devotee of shri mahaprabhu ji's total grace he was the kripa patra jeev complete kripa of shri mahaprabhu ji had showered on damla ji and so with complete kripa of guru also comes complete surrender of the devotee 
when the devotee surrenders completely to the guru guru grants complete kripa to the devotee this is what shri damla ji gives to shri mahaprabhu ji or shri mahaprabhu ji gives to damla ji shri damla ji gives his surrender or commitment to shri mahaprabhu ji and shri mahaprabhu ji grants the utmost fruit of the tree of bhakti shri krishna so with these characteristics keeping in our mind we can progress in the path of devotion also when we talk about our day to day life uh shri damodar das ji has a lot of characteristics which we can learn from him when we talk about our life other than spirituality with the right perspective these 84 vaishnavas teach us how to progress in devotion how to progress in spirituality but also with the second perspective we can learn that how with complete commitment towards your goal you can achieve wonders in your life with having a singular view or with having no dualism shri mahaprabhu ji is shrinath ji for me shri shrinath ji is mahaprabhu ji for me having no dualism towards anyone in this world will bring prosperity towards you and the third thing that we learn from shri mah shri damla ji is varta prasang is how in whatever situation you may be stay focused on your goal there are so many situations or prasangs where there are shri damla ji had so much his father had so much wealth he had so much to give but shri damla ji did not think upon it so don't worry about what you have or what you don't have but focus on what you want to have in form of shri thakur ji or what you want to achieve you might have tools or resources to grow in your business you might not have those tools or resources that might help you to become an entrepreneur but at the same time you should be confident that you have the ability you have the guidance of your guru you have the strength of his prayers with you which will help you which will guide you and which will boost you to reach your ultimate goal